Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming out to the first of two public meetings uh, for the park's 10-year master plan that we have here. I know everybody braved the inclement weather and the dangerous road conditions, so we thank you for coming out, and we want to definitely be respectful of everyone's time. Uh, before we get started, I would definitely want to introduce our elected officials. Um, over here to my left, we have Mr. Chris Watts. Beside him, we have Mr. Mark Adams. And up front, we have Councilmember LaShawn Burdanley. I uh, want to take the opportunity, if anyone would li like to have anything to say prior to getting started. No takers? We good? All right, well, of course, thank you all for coming out and supporting as well. Um, do we have other elected officials within Douglas County that might be present also? All right. Um, before we get started and before I turn it over to uh, Heather and David here. I also want to introduce our staff here in the back. Uh, Mr. Kendrick Davis, our uh, recreation coordinator. Uh, Sheila Mason, our parks manager. Uh, Mr. Andy Acker and Chris Cart Cartwright with the West Ponds Golf Club, golf club, golf course. Um, that will be here also in the event if you have any questions as well. So without any further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Heather Sparks and David Young of Lowson Associates. Uh, they'll be taking us on the journey for the rest of the evening. Great. Thank you all. Um, thank you again for coming out tonight and um, participating in this project. What we're going to do this evening is just give you a really quick overview of um, the purpose of the plan that's a comprehensive parks and recreation master plan, as well as um, give you some examples of what um, other park systems do that we've worked with in other parts of the country and in the southeast um, and then let you have an opportunity um, through various exercises you see the boards and activities around the room um, to give us your feedback on what you would like to see for the city of douglasville in the future um, so I've really kind of gone over um, our agenda for this evening and, and what we'll be doing. Um, the Comprehensive Parks and Recreation Master Plan for the City of Douglasville um, is encompassing us looking at all of the park facilities um, within the city, um, the city's parks facilities, um, looking at the programming that's offered through the Parks Department, looking at the department in terms of its operations and that staffing, budget, um, how it's organized, um, and um, looking at the budget in terms of revenues and expenditures, um, and then providing some uh, recommendations. Um, so we've started the process. Um, we've met with staff, we've met with elected officials, we have um, met with focus groups um, that are interested in um, different parts of the um, programming that goes on um, through the city. Um, we've visited all of the parks, walked them, looked at all of the facilities. We've done an assessment on those. And what we're looking at for that is um, in terms of um, an inventory of what is at each of the parks, um, maintenance of the park facilities, we're looking at um, whether the parks are um, accessible in terms of ADA access. Um, and then we're looking to see, you know, in what ways could each of the parks be improved um, if they need to be improved? Um, and should some of them, could some of them be repurposed in other ways? Um, so currently we are at the public participation process. We have the meeting this evening and then there will also be another meeting on uh, January 30th um, at uh, Jesse Davis Park at 6.30. You're welcome to attend that meeting as well, um, where we're reaching out to the public, again, explaining what we're doing, seeking feedback. And then after that meeting, we'll be um, working on a public survey um, where um, anyone in the um, public has an opportunity, um, whether they've attended the meetings or not, to complete an online survey and give us their feedback on parks, um, facilities, and programs, as well as um, individuals' um, impressions of the parks um, system overall. So following that, we will um, look at how the parks are distributed throughout the city, whether there are gaps in service, 
Um, are there parts of the city um, that don't have parks nearby um, that could that need parks nearby? Um, are there um, other providers in the city that are providing some parks and recreation um, programs um, and facilities that individuals are using? Um, and starting to make some recommendations. Um, we'll present our preliminary plan um, to staff for review. Um, we'll present that to the public as well as the elected officials. And then following that, we'll wrap up with the final plan. So right now, I just wanna go over a little bit what I'm talking about in terms of parks facilities and parks programs and what, other, what some other communities are doing in their parks department. So when we talk about parks facilities, we're really talking about things you can touch and feel. Brick and mortar, um, you know, buildings like this. This is a parks facility, a baseball field, a softball field. Um, and so when, when we're talking about those things, we are interested in what you would like to see for the city of Douglasville. Um, so I'm just gonna go through some examples. So when we talk about greenways and trails, it's a place where people can walk, where people can run, where they can ride their bike. They can be paved or they can be natural surface trails. Nature preserves. So these are purely open space places where you've got a piece of property, maybe there's an environmental um, you know, aspect to it that needs to be preserved where people can go and reflect or um, you know, have some, some passive time to themselves. Some of the um, nature preserves that we've worked on have um, trails through them um, or places for people to gather, but there's no sports fields or anything like that. Um, community gardens, we're certainly seeing a lot of this around the country um, and in the Atlanta region um, where, where people can, um, you know, have a place to gather together as a community, grow their own food. Um, you know, we've seen community gardens where they donate the food to a food bank or to local churches to distribute to those in need or to schools. Um, so we're seeing a lot of that. Um, neighborhood parks. So there's lots of different types of parks. Um, so neighborhood park is something that is, um, you know, people can walk to it within um, a half a mile or a mile. Um, it's going to have, a, you know, a playground or a place for people to gather, um, you know, maybe a basketball court. It's small, small in scale and usually a place where people can, can walk to or get to very easily. A community park is gonna be something a little larger. You're gonna start seeing some of your athletic facilities in these. Um, a community park is gonna reach about a two mile service area. Um, and sometimes we'll have um, a community building as well. Then you have sports complexes. They are dedicated only to, to sports. Um, you can have like the large picture in the slot is a um, large baseball complex. Um, no one's going to this park unless they're going to, to play baseball. Um, and you know, they sponsor tournaments, things like that. You could have soccer complexes um, or you could have sports complexes that have multiple sports at them, but for the most part, the only people going to these facilities are going to, to play on the, or to participate in these athletic functions. Um, dog parks, um, places for people to take their dogs to burn off some energy, um, run around. Um, there's small ones, there's large ones. Um, there are um, all sorts of amenities that you can provide um, for the animals to, to run around. Um, visual and performing arts. Um, so, you know, is it a um, place where you can have um, musical performances or theater productions or a place where individuals can learn um, art um, or display art, have art um, e exhibitions. Um, spray parks, splash pads, we use the terms interchangeably, um, but you know, certainly very popular. Um, and every community that I've ever worked with that has one, it draws people from, from all over. Um, wellness and recreation centers. Um, so this would be a place that has um, a gymnasium. Um, a lot of times we'll have a walking track indoors. Uh, meeting space, um, exercise equipment, and um, 
Sometimes they have swimming pools, as in the photograph here. Sometimes they don't. It depends on you know, what the community is really needing. Um, but they're bigger than just a gymnasium and a meeting space. It's going to be much larger. Aquatic centers could be an indoor swimming pool or an outdoor swimming pool. Um, or could even, like the very large picture um, in the middle, you know, certainly be almost like a water park. Um, um, places for active adults and seniors to go. Um, senior centers today aren't necessarily the same senior center that you know, my grandmother went to when, when I was a kid um, where she would play bridge. They're much more active. They're places where um, our active seniors go and exercise and do cooking classes and um, go on trips and they're very social. Um, there's dances. Um, this one um, in the middle, you can see they have musical performances um, at it. Um, so they're, they're much more robust than they were um, even just a few years ago. Um, accessible playgrounds and ball fields. These are places where individuals um, with physical handicaps can um, go. Um, you see a lot, you see miracle fields a lot. Y'all have a field actually um, where individuals can um, play play baseball, um, they're important to, to bring in other, um, your whole community. Um, rental pavilions, um, most cities rent their pavilions, um, some cities don't, um, and they vary in size. You could have um, anything from a large gazebo um, that holds 20 people to something that could be reserved for a corporate event. Um, a lot of times there are um, opportunities for cities to um, generate revenues. Um, again, you can have all sizes. Um, some have kitchens, some have grills, um, so there's different forms that you can have. Disc golf, y'all have a disc golf course just outside this building, um, which is great. Um, they're definitely very popular, and a lot of times they use um, park space that can't necessarily be used for a lot else. You find sort of places in between your parks where people can, um, can you know, use the, the land for this purpose. Archery, um, again, um, is popular um, with both children and adults, um, and there's different types of archery. Um, that's, it's done, um, and it's um, just bringing in something new in terms of um, facilities and programs. Adventure play, um, so ropes courses, zip lines, um, you know, if you have a place where you've got a lot of trees, a lot of these go through um, a lot of trees, and um, they're, um, they're a lot of fun um, and, and getting popular as well. So those were facilities. Again, you could touch and feel all of those things, um, and those and require some form of, of construction. Um, in terms of programming, programs are the activities that you would participate in, that you would do. Um, there's uh, karate across the hall, that's a program. Um, if it's a cooking class, that's a program. Um, tennis lessons would be a program. Um, so I'm just gonna run through again a couple of examples of some things. And I'm hoping that as you are looking at some of these photographs that you're getting some ideas on some things. Um, Douglasville has a lot of, you know, what we've talked about already. Some of it, Douglasville does not. Does Douglas, Douglasville need some of these things? Or are there other things that the city needs um, to serve its residents? So um, swim lessons, summer camps, youth baseball, um, softball, martial arts, visual and visual and performing arts, um, so adult softball leagues, teen programs reaching out to a population that's very difficult to, to be reached, um, summer concerts, um, nature programs, um, programs for our seniors, fitness classes, um, lacrosse is getting very popular in the Atlanta region, um, flag football, um, youth golf programs, so those are just some examples. And you probably have some that you would like to participate in, um, or maybe you're participating in it already, but you would like for the city to, to provide more of that. And so those are some of the things that we'd like for you to, to reflect on. Um, when you came in, you were handed um, 
some play money, and some dots. And um, with those, we're going to ask you to use those in a few different ways to give us some feedback on the programs and facilities you'd like to use, as well as if you were provided an opportunity with $500, let's say $5,000, or you know, think about it, how would you allocate those dollars if it was coming out of your own you know, um, bank account, for example, or when the city goes to allocate funds, how would you like the city to allocate some funds? So with the dots, you've got two strips of dots. Um, you can use those in any way you want. The colors don't mean anything. Um, there's two sets of boards over here um, on the left side of the room. Um, the board that's closest to the gentleman with the blue shirt at the sign-in table, that's a board with programs. And so we would like for you to look at those and see if those are any programs that you would like to see the city either have more of or have if they don't already have it. Um, and then there's a box at the bottom that says other. We couldn't ca capture everything. So if there's something that you would like the city to provide in terms of programming, please write it down. There's pencils over there um, and let us know those things. And if somebody writes down, for example, there's not a class on learning how to ride a bicycle and you think that that would be important to the youth in the community, you can vote for things that people write down. Um, the other set of the boards, there's two boards that are dedicated to facilities. Again, they're, use your dots to vote for the types of facilities that you would like the city to either provide more of if they already have it or provide if it's not already being provided. And same thing, there's an area at the bottom of each board where you can write additional comments for additional facilities. Um, the dollars that you have, you've got five one hundred play money, five one hundred dollars, and in the, the back of the room in the corner are ten buckets. And each bucket has um, a funding priority. Um, is it um, new trails and greenways? Is it improvements to existing parks? How would you allocate those $500 um, if you were advising the city um, as, when it goes to look at its budget on how to allocate funds? You can, and with the dots, you can put them all on one thing. You can distribute them however you want. Same with the dollars. You can put all $500 in one bucket if you think that's the, mo the biggest priority, or you can distribute it however you want to do that. Then we have some boards over here. Like I said, we couldn't capture everything on our boards or in our funding priority buckets. Um, if there are comments that you have about anything with the parks department, with um, what's being offered, um, things you would like to see changed, you can write those comments on the big whiteboard. Um, and then if there are areas of town where you would like to see parks, um, or there's a park we need to pay attention to when we go out and reassess, reassess the parks, you can write on this map. We're also interested in connectivity in terms of sidewalks and greenways and trails. You know, where are there opportunities for residents to be connected to um, parks, to public facilities, points of interest, or just their neighbors, and um, you know, being connected to a commercial area, anything like that. So if you think there's opportunities for us to look at for connectivity in the community, we would like to know that as well. And then David and I are gonna be walking around the room. We would love for you to come up and talk to us. We're interested in everyone's thoughts um, and feedback this evening. So please come talk to us. There are comment cards at the sign-in table. So if you have more comments than you, know, you can put on any of these boards, um, or you just wanna make sure that we get that comment, write, that, write down your comments on the comment cards and bring those up to us because we're interested in those things as well. Um, so at this time, we would really love to just kind of break up and let y'all um, speak with us participate in each of the activities, um, let us know if you have any questions, um, and, and definitely give us your feedback. So, thank you.